maybe you can adopt a school with a friend, you know, and you go back to work and say, hey, why don't we adopt this school in our neighborhood? You know, just go in and answer some questions if they have somebody who needs help with their printer. It's cool. Help them get it up. Um, but uh, OSEF, wonderful job. Uh, we all should support them. Open source the answer. Yes, Frank. So Brian's question is, what can be done outside of business hours? I will incorporate the answer to that in my final statement. You had a question. I can incorporate your answer to lay it on me. I don't have a statement. I don't have a question. Okay. 90% 90 of this room is male. Okay. Uh, is that Men are into technology. Generally, women are not. I mean, two of us here are really not techies. I, I just I suppose two or three women here. So 10% of women may be technology oriented. The game that we're also working on is really geared towards young girls learning as well. And that's what we need to, because our teachers also, most of them are women. They're not interested in computers. That's where we've got to start is, no, it's not right. First programmers were women, okay? Until there was money to be made, and then the men said, we'll take over from here, okay? <laughs> and then it just became some kind of mythology generated by, you know, your patriarchy here, that women couldn't do it, it was for men. You know, you didn't want to wear your fingers for it, so. But that was only after the money started coming. But don't you think if we direct it, do you see when young people are playing games, it's mainly young boys that are playing those games. I would see young teenage girls as into these games as the boys are. If they're into the I am the blogging and MySpace and all these things. The women use more the social networking. Okay, so right, I'll play the word games. Now, do, do, do any of our panelists share, do you have a, do you have a final statement? Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 I would say that the Internet is not just for women. It's for everybody. Yeah. 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 I agree completely with what Peter said. We can get a lot of, how do they say it, bang for the buck with Linux, because if we put a, just a small amount of money into a, a support staff that we could pay as opposed to having them volunteer. Um, Scott was in my room one night until 12 o'clock at night. He did all the work by himself. It would be much easier if someone had adopted my school. And, and, and you know, occasionally, and it doesn't have to be often, we've only had to call um, our parent once actually, this whole whole semester. It doesn't take a whole lot, but it does take some support, and that money could be used instead of buying hardware and applications for just the support staff. And I think our legislatures, legislators need to hear about that, how much they can leverage the money if we do go with open source. Um. I totally agree with her. Who <laughs> 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 agree with me? <laughs> um, we have um, again. I, I'm, we're striving for the the 99% open source Linux open source application school. Um, we're moving our library into open source because um, the state has moved into the, the Follett web based um, OPAC system. So now our librarian doesn't have to do all her fundraise. Well, she still does fundraisers, but she doesn't have to buy proprietary systems. She's telling me, okay, I'm now gonna fundraise for books since you are gonna get me some thin clients. And I, I tell her, okay, how many do you want? You want 20, you want 25, you want 30 in your library? We'll do it for 3,000 bucks. You can buy a server for about $3,000, get her 30 computers in her library. All the applications are free, all the updates are free, all the new applications are free. Um, we just need the support. So, you know, people like Ted doing all that volunteer work, people like Scott doing all that volunteer work, we need you <laughs> to come and do some work for the schools. Or, I mean, you know, it could, if you're not into the schools, it could be your local church, it could be your local um, elderly home, or community.
community center, anything. We need people power. Thank you. Not to jump on the bandwagon, <laughs> but the money that can be saved by going open source and by running Linux systems is huge. And that money can be directed towards human services, teaching teachers technology, teaching teachers how to integrate it, and enhancing our student learning. And let's start thinking about what do we want our students to know when they come through education. And rather than thinking dollars, think of these dollars are an investment in your students. And open source is a great way of getting better resources, more resources, and bettering our students and the children of Hawaii's education. My, my biggest problem is, uh, I, I gotta tell you, it's not the money because